Okay, so our learning intentions then is we're going to start by going through uh, district Google Meet guidelines. Um, we're going to talk about setting up a meeting, which we did a little already. And then we're going to talk about some of the tools, the add-ons that we have uh, for Google Meet, how to change your layout and other settings within the Google Meet, how to record a meeting, and then how to set good student expectations. So by the end of this training, um, you'll know you're successful when you can use Google Meet for student meetings. You can also use them for IPLCs or really any other kind of meeting. All right, and I'm going to move this over so I can refer to it <laughs> so I don't forget where I am. Okay, so um, I have pulled up um, the district's Google Meet guidelines, and um, this is linked in the um, now concluded level one course, um, and it will be linked in the archive of um, this particular training on the Canyons U course that we've created. So you'll have it as a reference. Um, but uh, as we go down to audio and video, there are some things that can help uh, your presentations, your, your meets to go a little bit better. Um, and they're listed here, but I also in the level one course had a fun little um, thing that we got from ESDAC, which actually is in Kansas. And they sort of made it as a <laughs> what not to do list. So let me pull that up on the next page here. There we go. The do's and don'ts. It's thinking about opening. There we go. <laughs> lagging just a little because we're on a call at the same time. All right, so these tie directly into um, these audio and video do's and don'ts. <laughs> but the basic idea is you don't, as it says, want to look like a shadowy, creepy figure hanging out in the back of <laughs> the Google Meet. And so um, what I've done in my office is I um, actually actually have some big windows that let in a lot of natural light. So I actually moved my computer so that that light's shining on my face instead of behind me, because when the light is coming from behind you, it can black out your face. You um, may also have heard of a lot of people who like to, you know, they have their Google Meets and things from the closet at home because it's the only quiet place, you know, and that's fine. And if you do that kind of thing, um, have an external light that you can turn on and shine right on your face. Um, some people also sort of like to have their screens like this because then they think people won't be able to see their, you know, chin or whatever else. <laughs> but it actually, especially as a teacher, you want your students to be able to see your face smile at them, engage with them as much as possible. And the same thing, honestly, if it's a meeting with colleagues, we wanna know you're there, we wanna know you're present and not some lurking shadowy figure. <laughs> so um, another one is um, don't forget that you're on camera. <laughs> so we've all, I think by now heard the jokes about people who forget that their camera is showing. So they stand up and they, you know, have on their, you know, uh, boxer shorts or something like that instead of their dress pants and <laughs> or go into the bathroom or who knows what. So remember you're on camera and that people are watching and convince yourself to behave the way you would behave in a classroom or a meeting. <laughs> um, also, um, setting your camera up in the right spot so we don't have to look up your nose is nice. Um, so what I've actually done is I have my laptop sitting on top of two reams of paper right now. <laughs> I don't have some fancy stand for my computer at home. It's a craft box that has a bunch of pictures in it. But the idea is to try to get that camera more eye level, because if it's sitting low, then we get that lovely view of looking up at your chin and your nose. And, you know, if, you, if that's, if you have to, you have to, but if you can find something to prop it up, that's better. <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, don't sit with your uh, back to a messy background. Mine's pretty plain right now. Um, you can kind of see, uh, nope, nothing much but the wall. <laughs> so that works. And um, 
So probably one of the worst things is to just have this crazy mess behind you because then it's not only distracting, but like, you know, doesn't really send the right organized and put together message to people. Um, then uh, don't forget to turn off your ringers on your phone. I always forget my watch. That's the one that I forget to turn off. And then um, don't make us listen to your barking dogs. <laughs> So I, it's funny because I, I don't have pets. And so I know people love and adore their pets and their dogs, but that doesn't mean that everybody in your meeting or your lesson wants to see your adorable dogs on the camera and hear them barking the whole time. So anything you can do to help avoid those kinds of things would be helpful. We all know that occasionally the younger children have popped in for a little cameo and we do our best to <laughs> try to keep those distractions down. And then this one was interesting, don't be bored or boring. I like that one more for like the IPLC or team meeting or faculty meeting if you end up having those online um, because it's a little easier to be animated when you're the one talking. <laughs> but when you're the one not talking, you know, it doesn't really help the speaker to see all these dead faces staring back at them or not even looking at them at all. <laughs> All right. And then one thing that I do a lot is stare at my own image because I don't know, I just want to see what it is that I look like, but it's actually better if you can look at the top of your computer screen there where your camera is actually at because then people see your eyes. <laughs> and finally, um, I thought this was an interesting tip. It's not necessarily like the district guideline, but it's a good tip. Um, don't say everything you know. And I thought, well, that's an interesting balance with meetings. I, it goes to just kind of the general idea that you let maybe three other people talk before you do, um, especially in online meetings when everybody's trying to, you know, sort of say every single thing that they have to say. It's a really good reminder to be a listener in those kinds of meetings as well as some someone who shares. And I don't think that means don't say anything ever because we want your participation no matter what kind of meeting it is. Um, but anyway, and when you're thinking about students, I think that really gives um, a good uh, reminder of giving your students expectations of when, how you expect them to share. Do they need to raise their hand first? Do they, how often should they be sharing? Um, is it a structured classroom discussion situation where you're doing, you know, taking turns? Let them know what your expectation is. All right, any thoughts or comments on that particular piece before we go on? Okay. All right, so that kind of covers the, the audio and video and the general meeting setup. Um, one thing that we didn't necessarily say was um, headphones, especially if you're going to be in a place where there is other outside noise, um, having headphones and even headphones with a microphone can help with that. Um, and depending on your internet connection, it might be better if you have uh, wired headphones instead of wireless, but that depends on how those are set up and how strong your signal is. So. All right. Um, also, it tends to be good protocol, especially when there are a lot of people in a meeting, to set the expectation that everyone mutes themselves the whole time unless they're speaking. Um, and as a teacher, you have the ability, because you're the one leading the meeting, to mute other people. So I think you can see my meeting screen right now. So as I'm looking at Debbie's screen, okay, I can see that I have a mute button for her. Now, how do I know she's not muted? Because I can see the three dots saying that I can hear her. And if I stay still for a second and let that bottom bar go down, I can see that Cinda is muted. She's got the red circle with her mic. So Debbie did that just for me so that I could go and show <laughs> that I can click mute and I can mute her. Yep, go ahead and mute. Now, what's interesting and, and good is I can't actually unmute anybody, which is nice to know, right? Like if you, if you tried your best not to have an interruption, but there came your little, you know, toddler and they're screaming and <laughs> 
you don't necessarily want the whole meeting to, without your knowledge, unmute you and hear what's going on, right? So that's nice. I can't unmute her, um, but I can mute her. Um, notice that I can also remove her from the meeting with this little button, and I could pin her if uh, Debbie's doing a presentation for the class, let, let's say. And I don't want other people, you know, bumping in, especially if I'm recording it for her to watch later or something. So pinning her will make her the main screen until I unpin her. Okay. Thanks, Debbie. You were my plant. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, all right. And I think we talked about those other things. Um, so at the start of the meeting, we talked about using a meeting nickname. I think we heard that pretty well. And Debbie, you got to hear that part, didn't you? Or do you want, did you come in after we talked about that? You heard it. Okay, good. And I, it's in my recording. So when the editors can move the order if they want to. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And we also talked about making sure that you're the first to join and the last to leave the meeting. I like to uh, try my best to get into the meeting a few minutes early because it takes everybody a few minutes to get in and get settled. Um, oh, so we talked about the privacy of the um, nicknames and all of that. And so one tip is um, to not post those nicknames out into the public. Um, so, I mean, you have the ability, if someone were to get into your meeting who doesn't belong there, the nice thing is, is that you can kick them out, but you still want to avoid that and keep it as secure as possible. So a posting nicknames on Canvas because it's password protected works better than like some teacher website or Twitter or something like that. Okay. All righty. And then, um, okay, so recording meetings. In fact, let's take this opportunity to just look at some more of the um, tools. And I know it makes for kind of a funny view for all of you sharing my screen with <laughs> everything, but it'll let you see the tools I'm talking about. So as you've noticed, anytime that you or I move our mouse across the screen, this bar comes across the bottom, this white bar. And so over on the right hand side, there are these three dots. And when you click on that, you get several new options. And can you see my options when I put them up like that? Okay, good. All right. Um, perfect. So the very top one is that recording button. So obviously I'm recording mine. Um, you can also tell that because over here uh, it says record. Um, so good etiquette is to inform people in the meeting that you're recording. I think we knew that this was going to be recorded for later, but if not, now you know. <laughs> um, and Generally speaking, the reason that we would record um, meetings with students in particular is because we can't always guarantee with online learning that every student is going to be able to be in the Google Meet at the same time. We try um, to schedule it so that it works, but we just don't know what's going on in their homes if it happens to be a home learning situation. Um, and so one reason is we want to record so that they have a record they can go back and watch if they were not able to be with us in the meeting. Um, another reason is if for some reason you feel uneasy about what may occur in a meeting, let's say you're having a little small group uh, study session with some students. If you have any reason to feel worried about parents questioning what's happening in the meeting or anything like that, a recording could be a nice just, you know, backup for you to say, well, actually, you can watch exactly what we did in the meeting. <laughs> now, with that, of course, you have to be careful about the privacy of the other people in the meeting, right? So I wouldn't suggest that you just go share uh, to any old parent, a recording that has other people's kids in it, but you could work with an administrator if you needed to. So I think that that kind of thing is rare if you avoid it being one on one online with kids. It's better if you just have um, a group setting. There are certain positions that may need to have a one on one thing and you've worked out permissions and things like that with parents and 
and, and an admin. So anyway, generally though, it's really more just to allow the class to rewatch if they weren't able to see it. Uh, it could be used for an IPLC or a faculty meeting as well if there were people who weren't able to be there and in that case if you're sharing it you're sharing it to just that group of people again in a password protected environment like canvas okay all right and, and i'm going to pause for just a second any questions up to this point about sort of those safety protocols and in particular recording yeah debbie Mute. Now you have to mute yourself. <laughs> um, you were talking earlier about editing, um, yeah. So it kind of it kind of fits what we were talking about, but maybe it would fit in a different uh, Google Meet. But um, sometimes you like if I start recording it as soon as I get on, so that I have a recording of everything I say to my kids. Okay, so yeah. like we got on slowly, one at a time. Right. And then when I, if I want to take that video and put it into Canvas for anybody who didn't make it to the meeting, I don't necessarily need to put in the beginning discussion I might have had with a student. How, how do I edit that out so I still have it in case something happens, but the rest of the class doesn't need to see it? Yeah. So um, you would need to edit it in some kind of other editing software. Um, so one simple tool would be to down, so the recording goes into your Google Drive, into a Google Meet recording folder. Um, so you could download that and you could edit it in iMovie just like you might any other movie. So you've still got the original copy of the Google Meet hanging out in your Google Drive, but you can edit and like you said, maybe just pull the pieces that you really want for instruction and you could post that on a Canvas page for review, you know, of your students. Um, another option, so really any video editor would work. Um, another option is if you wanted to use YouTube, it has a very simple video editor built into YouTube that allows you to cut and trim. I don't think it's as easy to use as iMovie, but then again, I've used iMovie a lot, so it's up to you. If you do post something like that on YouTube, you need to be very careful about the permissions. Um, so in particular with YouTube, you would want to set the video to unlisted um, because then only people with the link can see it. Uh, private makes it too locked down and your students wouldn't be able to watch it. Now, if you are an elementary teacher, YouTube's not the way to go because because your elementary kids, if they're at school, would not be able to watch it. Um, so if you wanted it for a small group, like a practice station, not the best option. So I think probably something like iMovie would be the way to go. And then you could either re-upload it and store it in your Google Drive, or you could just upload it as a file into a Canvas course directly. That would work too. Okay. So. Okay. Are we going to have PD on iMovie because I dabbled with it, but I really have no clue how to use it? Uh, we definitely can. So there is a filmmaking course that we had open during the summer. It's concluded now, um, but I will definitely add that to the list to add to Canyon's U um, so that those steps can be there. Because um, especially for something as simple as just splicing what you want, uh, that should be pretty quick. And with a lot of people in the district having Macs, that works well. So I will suggest it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Any other questions about that? Cinda has a question. Let's check it out. She says, um, good example, Cinda, of our chat feature too, by the way. <laughs> um, where are the Canyons U videos posted? So when you go to the Canyons U course, um, right now, now I'm in the mini uh series, but there will be these same circles on the home page and the topics of each one will be listed there. And so that's where they will be posted. And for this mini series in particular, each of these then, so like here's our Google Meet one, this links to a page that currently says something like coming soon. Oh, no, but it's there. It's got the learning intentions and then the video will be placed there. So if it's one of these mini series ones, you'll wanna go directly to the mini series page that's linked from the main Canyon Zoo page. And if it's just another topic, 
and it'll be there. So use the Canyons U page because I just got this my um, EdTech and sent an email, and that's exactly. the only way I know where it is. So where okay. do we? Yeah, so it's still under construction, basically. Uh -huh. It's been shown to everybody in Tech Summit. So if you've been to Tech Summit, you've seen the shell. And so I think within the next couple of weeks, you'll get another email from your school's ed tech coach that will uh, give you the invitation to the actual general Canyon View course. Okay, thank you. Great question. Okay, cool. Well, let's continue on then and kind of finish up talking about these tools that are on those three dots. So the other things underneath recording are to change the layout. So when I click there, you can see the options. Um, one criticism, I suppose, if you will, is that there's not a good option for like having you be part of the screen. You're always, unless you're the spotlight um, and you're the speaker, you are just kind of this thumbnail in the corner. But got some nice uh, uh, options there. And when you have a bigger group, I tend to like either tiled or sidebar. But sometimes if you're really just focused on the main speaker, spotlight's a good way to go. So um, that leads me to mention um, the add-ons that I said we would talk about. One of them was called Grid, which did allow you to be part of that tiled look and Pardon me, it allowed a lot more people to be part of that tiled look. Um, unfortunately, it just was not working well. So if you notice that you don't have grid anymore, it used to be right here. That's because the IT department has removed it because it wasn't functioning well. If at some point the people who made grid make it better, it might come back, but don't be lost and confused. Where did grid go? <laughs> um, okay. So then the next one, you can go full screen. Um, this one's fun. <laughs> if you turn on captions, a uh, nice accessibility feature, um, what will happen is that underneath the screen, there we go, when I'm still enough to let the white thing go down, it will actually close ca caption on the fly. <laughs> and it's like, really captivating i can't help but just stare at it and it was funny i was practicing last night and i had the tv on and it was some like prescription medicine commercial it did pretty well at getting all of those weird words that they were saying onto the closed captioning even even from the television <laughs> so nice little feature there if it's helpful for some of your students or co-workers all right i can turn those off and then um, underneath, of course, there are more settings if you need them for your particular uh, computer, microphones, videos. So if it's ever not working for you, that's the place to look. And then um, uh, some other things for getting help, which is nice. Of course, you can always chat with your IT uh, field tech or your ed tech coach um, or even your achievement coach um, as well. Um, this one here that says use a phone for audio, usually that's not necessary if you're on your computer, um, but every once in a while, if you're connecting through the app on your phone, um, I've noticed with Zoom that sometimes the connection is better if I do audio over phone. I have not had the same issues with Meet, but it's an option, so it's kind of nice to know it's there. Um, and as long as I'm mentioning that, I will remind you that you do have the option of joining a meet from your phone. And I tried this the other day to see how well it could see. It's not perfect, but that's what it looks like. Um, and then when you go into meet, you do have that same option to join a meeting or start a meeting. Oops, I started one on accident. What I meant to do was join one <laughs> um, where it says meeting code on your phone. That's where you can type either the code or the nickname. So it's very similar. All righty. And then I think we've noticed that your microphone button is on this white area, leaving the call. If you do need to get up in the middle of a meeting for some reason, you can turn off the camera. And if you have a picture on your profile, it will show up. If not, it'll show your name. And then if for some reason you need the meeting info, right here where my nickname is, I can open that up and I can get the joining info again and copy it if needed. But that's a little less necessary when you're using a nickname, okay? 
right, good. So then um, a couple things across the top. Obviously, we've been mentioning the chat feature and the icon is there. You'll also notice that it does pop up that message for us to see that there's a chat and then there's a little number that hangs out here. So the chat can be really nice um, as uh, we were seeing demonstrated uh, to have comments, to add links. Um, so like if I wanted to give you the direct link to this Google Meet guidelines, I could pop it right into the chat. Something to consider is that if someone comes into a chat after something's been posted, they can't uh, see it. So you just have to make sure everybody's in. Um, it's also a good place as Cinda has been using it for questions. And if I, as the presenter, needed to not be interrupted, I could let Cinda's questions sit there for a while until it's time for a break. And then I could say, OK, let's look at what questions we've got. I also saw a nice suggestion, which was that you could present your computer and have a Google Slides presentation up that has the question and answer feature. And then you can put the link in for the kids into the chat and they can actually do their questions through the Google um, Slides presentation too. So some fun options there. All right, and then over on the left-hand side, this is the Nod add-on. This is the other one that IT pushed out to everyone. If you do not automatically see Nod showing up, uh, then you can reach out to your ed tech coach because there's a few little steps you can take to make sure that the add-ons that IT is pushing out do push out properly to your account. But this um, gives students the ability to raise their hand, basically, and to give little responses. So if you've ever used Zoom, they have like the thumbs up and things like that. This gives you that option in um, Google Meet as well. So you can see the different things. So maybe all I need, yeah, perfect, Debbie. So maybe all I need is to say, does everybody see this? And Debbie's been doing a good job of going like this. Another option is she could do what she just did, which was click on the thumbs up. And then the hand raise, when I click that one, it actually keeps it there for a little bit. And so that again, if I'm in the middle of explaining something, I can let it stay there for just a moment. And then I can say, oh, okay, it looks like, you know, Katie had a question and then I can um, clear that out once we've addressed it. In a big meeting um, or an IPLC or something like that, if you're having trouble talking over each other all the time, then that works really well for that kind of meeting as well when you have a comment to make. Um, we used to be having a lot of trouble with Nod. <laughs> and sometimes the hand raises just weren't showing up. And sometimes, so from what I've been told, Nod made improvements and it should be working a lot better for you now. But it is a third party thing, so <laughs> we hope it keeps doing its job. All right, any um, questions that we haven't answered about add-ons and all of these different settings? Debbie, thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> Go ahead. I had last year some students that couldn't see those options on their screen. Do we know if it works for all devices or are there some devices that it's not showing up on. Uh, yeah, so it is a Google add-on. And so it's probably going to work best in Google Chrome. And frankly, Google things in general work best in Google Chrome. So if they're joining from an app um, on their phone or their uh, mobile device, then they might not see it. Okay, so let's see what we haven't talked about yet. Um, Okay, so I think really it's uh, student expectations that we want to uh, finish up with. And so um, let me get to where I told you while I talk about this. So essentially, when you're using uh, Google Meet as a classroom, just like any other classroom, you want to set clear expectations. Um, then the added need for clear expectations in Google Meet is um, there because 
the students aren't right there with you physically. So you can't use something like proximity to help them, you know, re uh, train their, their thoughts and their attention. Um, there are also a lot of distractions often for them in their own homes. And so um, having clear expectations becomes in some ways even more important when you're online. This uh, list here that's on our Google Meet guidelines document are some suggestions of those ex expectations you wanna set. So we talked about one being mute yourself when not talking. Um, if you can really, again, state the expectation, maybe you post it the same way I did our learning intentions at the beginning and then remind kids it really helps when there's a larger group in particular. Uh, turning off your camera if you get interrupted, you know. So if you can't avoid it and the, you know, cat just jumped on your computer or, you know, whatever, it help the class uh, by turning off your camera until you can get the situation cleared up. Um, we talked about using the chat to ask questions or whatever tool it is that you are having the class use. Um, keeping all comments, both voice and text comments, school appropriate. Um, this goes right along with the training that we do all the time of being a good digital citizen. And a lot of schools really have worked on tying their digital citizenship uh, expectations to the school rules. You know, so for example, I know at Mid Valley, their school rules spell out pause, <laughs> P-A-W-S. Those same things apply when you're online. And so helping them understand that just because you're in a virtual environment doesn't mean you're a different person, doesn't mean that school rules don't apply. Um, and then letting them know that the meeting might be recorded. Not only does that let them know they can access it later, but they might behave a little differently if they know it's being recorded. <laughs> and we talked about posting recordings. Um, so those are just some, but you may find other things that start to happen in your own uh, Google Meets with students. Um, you may even find it for your IPLCs that you need to, as we do in person, review the norms of collaboration that your IPLC uses. And maybe there are a couple things that start happening when you're meeting online that require a little adjustment. Um, but always state those norms and review the expectations at the start of your class. And good practice too, at the end of your class, have everybody rate themselves on how they did. You know, it doesn't even have to be public for everyone to see, but in their own minds, how did we do with keeping our mics muted and making our comments appropriate? And um, okay, I think um, again, respect and, and focusing on Good digital citizenship is a good way to go. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about digital citizenship and really, even though it can be a challenge <laughs> getting them there, that these opportunities for some of these small group or whole class meets are good practice for them uh, for working in the digital world in general. And um, we do a lot of don't do this online, don't do this in chats. And some of that's needed. You know, <laughs> don't type I, 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 while we're trying to have a lesson. But then we can also take a positive approach. What do good digital citizens do? Well, they contribute positively to a lesson instead of detracting, right? They show respect to their students. They are listeners. They are, you know, so if we can turn it around to be a positive thing as well, that's, I think, beneficial. So, well, cool. Um, so I think we've talked about everything in our learning attentions. Did any other questions come up as we were going through? Okay, awesome. Okay, well, again, I'll reiterate that the record of this will be linked on the Canyons U um, mini series, whatever it was called. I can get back to the homepage. It'll be linked there. And then, as I said, you'll also get a link at some point soon for the overall Canyons U course um, for all of the other lessons that we'll be providing. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Have an awesome year. <laughs>